In today's lesson on trigonometry, we're going to have a look at some more trig functions. In the previous lesson, we had a look at questions A to D of this specific given sketch, where we have functions f and g, and now we're going to have a look at question E. Use the given graphs and determine the values of x for which fx is smaller than gx. Now, fx is our orange graph, and smaller than means below the gx graph, which is our green graph. When we need to compare two graphs and whether one is bigger or smaller than the other one, we need to focus on the points where they are equal, and that will give us our intervals that we're going to work with. So the first coordinate where they are equal is coordinate P, and then again at coordinate Q. And this divides our sketch into three intervals that we are now going to have a look at separately. Our first interval will have all the values smaller than minus 105. And in this case, we can see that the green graph is above the orange one, which means the orange one is below or smaller than that. And that is exactly what the question was. So that's part of our answer. Our next interval is between minus 105 and 15. And here we can see that our orange graph is now above or bigger than the green one, so that is not part of our answer. Our last interval, all the values bigger than 15, once again we have our green graph above and our orange graph below, which means that will be part of our answer again. So to write this down, we have two answers because we had two intervals that fit with our question. So the first one will be all the x values smaller than minus 105, but our sketch ends at minus 135 degrees. Our next interval is from 15 degrees upwards, and once again this graph ends at a specific spot, which is 45, so it's everything between 15 and 45 degrees. Question number two is where fx times gx is smaller than zero. Now, a value smaller than zero is a negative value. And when we have to calculate a product to get to a negative value, we will have a positive times by a negative. This means we need to go and have a look at x values where the one graph is positive, meaning above the x-axis, and the other one is negative or then below the x-axis. So for this, our intervals will be determined by x-intercepts. So we're going to start off at minus 135. Our next x-intercept is at C, minus 90. Our next intercept is at 0 degrees, and then again at 45. So if we look at our first interval, we can see here that both graphs are above the x-axis, so positive, and that will not give us a negative product. Our next interval, our top graph is positive and our bottom graph is negative. So we have a positive times by a negative and that will give us a smaller than zero value. And our last interval, once again, both are positive. So that cannot give us a negative answer. So we only have one interval and that is the interval in the middle. So x can be any value between minus 90 degrees and zero. Question three, determine the values of x for which sin x times cos x is minus a half. Here we need to realize that we have a sin and a cos graph, but not a graph for sin times cos. So now we'll have to do a bit of manipulation to get something that is on our graph. On our left, you need to realize that we have sin times cos, which is part of a double angle identity. However, we need a 2 multiplied to the front. Now, if we want to change the left to 2 sin x times cos x, we need to multiply the right with 2 as well. On the left, I now have a double angle identity, and this can be rewritten as sin of 2x. And on the right, when I simplify, I have minus 1. And we need to realize now that sin 2x is 
our G graph. So the question is actually simply, where is this green graph equal to minus 1? And that will be at coordinate B. So the answer is simply at X is minus 45.